When my manager said, have you heard of this guy named Kamal Hassan? I was like, yes. I was like, I fell off the chair. I'd already been working in America on independent cinema and they weren't looking at South Asians as mainstream actors. When we were shooting Vishrup in part one, we didn't know we were going to do, I didn't know we were doing part two. Hello and welcome to Film Companion. Manakkam, yeah. thank you. So, uh, in an interview during the release of your Telugu film, uh, yes. PSV Garuda Vega, yes. you said that you didn't, when they approached you, you didn't know who Rajasekhar was. I didn't. And, and you had to wiki him up. <laughs> uh, this didn't happen with Kamalasan when they approached you for Vishwan. Obviously, Rupert, right? yes. I mean, when my manager said, have you heard of this guy named Kamal Hassan? I was like, yes. I was like, I fell off the chair because my first Hindi movie was Ek Duje Ke Liye. Well, yeah. And I'm a Bharatnatyam dancer. And so when I saw him do Bharatnatyam, I mean, he did it in such a manly, graceful manner. I've never seen anyone like that. I was like in awe. Uh, and ever since then, I've been a fan. So I was just going to ask you, when you, when you did Vishwarupam, how much of Kamal Hassan's work had you seen? And, and you know, uh, what were your favorite films? I mean, I saw a lot of his movies. I mean, I loved uh, Swati Mutyam, uh, Mahanadi, uh, Sagar. <clears throat> so I was already a big fan of his. And, uh, and I was wondering, and I loved Heram. I mean, that was by far, I think, one of the best films he's ever done. And I, w I was always wondering like why he wasn't directing more because I think he's got this unique voice right. where he's been able to blend the Indian sentiments uh, but bringing like a modern take on it, which I really appreciated, right? Because these were films where like the American audience, which I'm from, didn't know about. And uh, they, his films were realistic and they, were, and they had a lot of integrity in it. So before coming, I knew already about him. Uh, what I didn't know was I was going to be nervous every day on set. Like, I thought the, I've done 21, you know, independent films, I've done about 25 off-Broadway plays, uh, and I, that prepared me. I think that is what made me um, <clears throat> able to share the screen with him and sort of stand with him so that our characters uh, aren't sort of these, um, uh, you know, we're using each other, right? So I think other actresses, we sometimes have this, feeling and that and that feeling comes in about how we feel for them in real life comes in with our acting so I didn't want that to happen uh, but I was definitely nervous I mean every day the first day on set he gives me five pages of dialogues in Tamar and I'm like oh great puja I tum apna bags you just pack your bags and say thank you very much sir it'll be better not to waste your time and leave 15 16 17 takes on the first day I said oh my god you're so bad, it's not even funny. Uh, and then uh, at the end of the first day, he said, Nal ki pakla. I'm like, huh? Okay. He was very patient. He was patient, totally patient. And then I said, I didn't say anything, and I just continued on. And then I realized is that I was understanding the character and the emotions uh, and the expressions, which is what was key uh, about it. Because language is not an not issue, true. right? And then as far as in this day and age, we can speak anything now. You said that when they approached you with the script of Vishwarupam, you yeah. thought it was something like Hannibal. I d well, so when I was on Skype with Sir, when I first met him, he was in this, his Afghani mode, right? So he was like all roughed up and like black faced because of all the Afghan portions. And I was like, he didn't say anything about the movie. He just said, hi, I'm Kamal Hassan. And I said, hello, sir, how are you? He said, uh, I'm doing a movie. And I said, I know, sir, you're doing a movie. Uh, and he says, oh, have you seen any of my movies? And I said, yes, of course we've seen your movies. Uh, and then he said, okay, uh, we'll be in touch. And then I didn't know what was going to happen or not. And then five days later, I'm on a plane. But when I saw him on Skype, he had an umbrella on, and then it was like all muffed up and scuffed. I was like, okay, are we redoing Silence of the Lambs? Are we doing Hannibal Lecter's character? What are we doing? Like, I have no idea because I couldn't see his face. Um, and then, of course, I mean, you don't question anything. So I just went right. and I, and that's it. And then I signed a three-picture deal. Was there a difference between acting in Vishwarupam 1 and 2? Or was it all done at one stretch? So when we were shooting Vishwarupam part 1, we didn't know we were going to do, I didn't know we were doing part 2. I think he probably had something in his mind uh, and then solidified it maybe later with the rest of us. But for me, I didn't know till the end of shooting of part 1. Uh, and then he said, look, I'm doing two more movies. Um, you know, would you like to be part of them? And I said, of course. Uh, so I didn't know at that time. Um, but what I loved about this is that they're two standalone movies. You can see part one without seeing part two, and you can see part two without seeing part one. Uh, of course, it's a greater experience because then you see the characters, and then you start right. falling in love with them, and then you see what they do in part two. And I loved my character because it was like in part one, 
she's like, who is this guy? He's like a Kathak dancer. I don't want to marry. He's like, I'm married to him and he doesn't love me. Why am I going to be with him? So, uh, and then sort of by the end, it, we see this transformation with her because suddenly she's not this selfish woman and she's fallen for a man who's going to do something for the country, like the greater good. And she's learned her lesson almost like, All right, what am I doing? I'm like this selfish person who doesn't even care about anyone else. And then um, she kind of, kind of digs in there and like she's not a raw agent, she's not a spy or anything, right? So she just kind of engrosses herself and like, okay, right. I'll be part of this. And doesn't stand on the side and wants to be, you know, as helpful as possible. And then we see her in the end actually help him, you know, defuse the bomb. And then in part two, you're going to see them even more, uh, the romance, right. the drama, the thrilling, the action. I mean, it's like 10 times more. So it's going to be pretty awesome. You grew up in a Hindi-speaking family. Yes. How difficult was it to speak Tamil? And can you, can you mention one line of, can you recall one line of dialogue that, that was really tough in Vishwarupam? Um, I, it was, it was tough because, uh, Hindi, uh, is, is my second language actually. English is my first, but I only spoke it in the evenings. Uh, and then I actually went to Lucknow and Dehradun where my parents are from every year during the summertime. And then I would practice with my cousins and my nani and everyone. So, and they'd be like, you still have an American accent. I was like, I have to it. So then I learned ka ka ga ga. But Hindi and Tamil are right. totally separate. Uh, because it's a Dravidian language, uh, there's 246 letters. Like, I'm finding it very like difficult, but I'm trying and I'm learning and I will get better at it. <laughs> what was the, the, the line that troubled you the most? Do you remember? Um, oh my gosh. Well, in, in Vishwam, all I had was one line, right? So it wasn't that bad. Um, but in Uttama Villain, when I did that, I was speaking like 17th century, like, I mean, like, very difficult dialogue, so uh, I can't recall any right now. <laughs> okay. So, how tough was it to act opposite Kamala Hassan? And and the second thing is how watching him act because you already have some kind of acting experience. Did it yeah. refine the way you approach acting? Did it change some of your own sensibilities? You know, working with him uh, actually solidified my goal, which was to take Indian cinema and Indian artists to an international level. I'd already been working in American independent cinema and they weren't looking at South Asians as mainstream actors. We were getting the roles of just like, okay, the 7-Eleven owner and, you know, the dorky girl, whatever, with the thick eyebrows. And I mean, they weren't looking at us as these powerful women. And I was wanting to do that. And I thought, well, okay, I'm going to get a chance to work with Sir. And after working with him, I mean, he's the man who has taken it to an international level 20 years ago when there were no facilities or anything. And that really kind of helped me um, be more confident in what I wanted to do. Because I was like, well, if he's doing it from India and, and I'm getting a chance to work with him and observing him, uh, I think I'll be able to do something at least, right? And, and, and working with him also, I was always looking at it as an actor from a character point of view. So I was looking at the actor, like their background, their history, the way they look, the way they walk, what clothes they wear, what skin color do they have, do they wear glasses, not glasses. So I was looking at characters and their beginning, middle, end, and their arc. But after working with Sir, he was like, you've got to look at the whole thing, which I never right. saw because I thought, okay, that's a director's job. That's a filmmaker's job. But actually, when you look at the whole thing and you look at each of the actors, then you see where you fit in and how you can make that even more interesting. And I never thought about it that way, actually. Um, so I have to thank him for that. Um, and then hopefully I can continue on and, and you know, make him proud. All right. All the best. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Henry.